Jeez, you already know who it is. It's myself, Omega Axel, aka Never Back once again, putting in the ancestors' work. What's good? Wagwan, what's going down for the live and locked in fam? First thing I have to say is obviously thank you for your time and attention and thank you for tuning in. Second thing I have to say real quick is thank you to all of the patrons, new and old. I appreciate your support. If it wasn't for people like you, videos like this would not be possible. So thank you for supporting your boy. Listen, anybody who tuned in last week to the first part will know that I'm extremely excited at the moment because I've embarked on this project to bring back the work of Joel Augustus Rogers to the forefront of Black Broken People's Minds. And obviously this presentations or these presentations, all four of them, are literally a tribute to him and obviously the work that he did um, and each week we're delving into a little bit of his background what he did for the community what he did on a personal level some of his achievements and obviously the strength of his legacy um so last week we you know we spoke about him very very briefly but i also mentioned to you or you may have also picked up from social media that i'm very excited because i've been waiting for the first physical copy of the new book to land and it is now here and let me tell you people i am gassed i'm extremely excited because ultimately anybody who knows about you know the process of creation when you actually see something manifest that you have put your time your attention your focus into like it's a beautiful thing so thank you to everybody who supported along the way a special thank you to everybody who has requested to be a part of the pre-order list okay i mean there must have been about 30 or, or 30 or 35 of you who directly messaged me and emailed me over the past couple of days saying yo how do i get involved how do i support so thank you dearly for that like i genuinely can't express to you how much that means to me but i mean just on top on top of the fact that this you know is very simply is something which i've been able to create just uh, the quality the quality that's come through like i'm extremely happy it's 122 pages you know so it's not a massive read but ultimately it's here you know i had to test the quality before i released them out there and the quality is on point so i'm happy everything is good to go the official launch date um, as you may already know, is the 12th of December, but we're going to be doing a pre-launch on the 2nd of December at the British Museum. So if you are in the London area or you are able to travel down there, please get in touch with me about how you can get tickets or how you can reserve a space or simply how you can actually get a copy of the book as well. Okay, because I find, well, if you didn't know, 50% of the profits of the sales of this book are indefinitely going to be donated to the We Will Rise Together project. So you choosing to learn and grow with this title is actually going to help other people of the Black African community across the diaspora learn and grow as well. So you'll be doing a good thing tenfold. Um, what else do I have to say real quick before I even get into this? What is it that I wanted to talk about with Joel Augustus Rogers this week? Because as I said, we've been talking about him very briefly. So I don't want to delve into two much detail because you are able to to learn this from the book and i don't want to give too many um too many too much of the content away but um last week what did we say so we briefly spoke about kind of the, the different works that he did and i want to reiterate that despite the fact that rogers published seven critical articles that were published on a global scale which helped shape the mind and the reapproach of you know the the, the treatment and the conditions of black African people. One such article being such, um, sorry, which he published in, I think, uh, Crisis, a Crisis newspaper was called The Suppression of Negro History. And it is a very, very good read. And I recommend that you go to Google when you get a chance and actually read that. Um, it's one of my favorite ones. Um, but on top of all of the newspaper journalism, which he did, okay, Rogers published 39 works in total some of which were and still are the go-to content and the go-to books when you know we recommend people who are re-entering this african consciousness so um i think the only work that we actually spoke about in any detail at all were his seminal work which was from superman to man and obviously 100 amazing facts about the negro so what else was that I mean, Rogers wrote in a very concise, understandable way, and he wrote histories that were relatively easy and um, accessible at this period of time. Now, he put out a work called The Negro Experience in Christian Islam, 
um, which highlighted and spoke about the origins and the ramifications and the pros and the cons of these different religions on black African people at a period of time, which we don't actually really receive much history about Islam in America at this period of time. So it's quite revealing. Um, so anybody kind of genuinely wanting to know more about these things there, I would recommend going to get that. Um, another thing which I like to point out as well, right, for all of the amazing works that Rogers did throughout his period, throughout his life, like he was never actually, and still to this point here today, is like unrecognized or unacknowledged by the global kind of community for the works that he did. So that's another major reason as to kind of wanting to release this work, to let people know, because I mean, I, like many other people, I'm sure who follow African traditions and African spiritual practices and, and just trails of thought and subscriptions that, people remain alive for as long as they remain uh, remain in the hearts and minds of people. So if we forget about people like J.A. Rogers and the work that he does, his legacy is going to die out. So it's important for us to carry this on. Um, but I don't want to waste much of your time. Okay, so I'm going to crack on and get straight into the, um, into the next 25 facts. Don't forget to like, share, comment, you know, bring your family and friends in on the video because at the end of the day, this information was served to us 83 years ago and it's uh, a lot of it we still don't know so it's important that re we, re we reacquaint ourselves with this knowledge because these are the building blocks into which we move forward on so without any further ado let's get it in let's move to fact 26 okay psalms Read like those of the Bible were written by a pharaoh, Amenhotpes the fourth, better known as Akhenaten, the heretic king of 1300 BCE, or more than 400 years before David was born. Akhenaten, who was the father of Tutankhamun, was the Negro. Oh, sorry, was extremely Negro in type, and he is called the most remarkable of pharaohs. Again, just like the other video last week, what I'm gonna do is to save time on the video instead of going through the fact and the proof literally going to allow you time to be able to pause it or to, to take a screenshot so you can come back to it at a later time. Fact 27. Ethiopians, that is Negroes, gave the world the first idea of right and wrong and thus laid the basis for religion and of all true culture and civilization. The earliest exposition of this yet found is in the so-called Memphite drama, which is known only through the copy on a slab of basalt made by the order of an Ethiopian of 700 BCE. I've got to just interject with this one, okay? The Ethiopian in question is Shabaka, popularly known as Sabakon. Um, I just also want to point out as well, something which I pointed out in the previous video, is we also have to respect and take into consideration that J.A. Rogers had access to the information which he did at that period of time. We now know from studying comedic history much in, in much more detail that there are older theologies such as the cosmogony of Anu, the cosmogony of Kemenu, and the cosmogony of Waset. So, um, yeah, you can't take a little screenshot there. Fact 28. The celestial saint of Germany is Saint Maurice, a pure Negro. Whilst in command of a Roman legion in Gaul, modern day Switzerland, in 287 CE, he refused to attack a group of Christians as ordered to do so by the Emperor Heraclius, for which he was killed, made a martyr. He is pictured in many German cathedrals and museums, sometimes with an eagle on his head, and recent pictures of Hitler nearly 1700 years later show Hitler with the same emblem on his head. It's interesting, whenever you speak to uh, a European with closet racist tendencies and you mention that Hitler copied the iconography and symbology of Ethiopians and Africans, they get um, a very dry throat. Fact 29. Yusuf, a king from Upper Senegal, Africa, saved Moorish civilization in Spain 1086 CE. The Moors, being pushed out 
by the white Christians of German descent. Yusuf crossed the barren uh, the Strait of Gibraltar with only 15,000 men, most of them pure blacks, with 10,000 more of the Moors, met with the King Alfonso the Sixth, or sorry, the Fourth, at Zakala or Zalaka, sorry, should I say. The latter had an army of 70,000, nearly three times as great, but Yusuf inflicted a terrific defeat on him. The flower of white knighthood was destroyed in that battle among those who later, before the military prowess of Yusuf, uh, was Rodrigo Diaz de Bivara, Rodrigo Diaz de Bivara, known as the Cid, and the greatest figure in the heroic age in Spain. So, I mean, you can look at that picture just above me right there and you can see that there is no mistaking that that is a deep central regional African bread of day. Fact 30. The First World War in history was started by Abhada, a Negro emperor and ex-slave, when he attacked Mecca in Arabia in 569 CE. The war lasted longer than 1,000 years and stretched from France to beyond China and brought about the fall of many great empires. One of them, the later Roman Empire, uh, with the capital of Constantinople in 1453 CE. So again, you can take your screenshot or your, you know, you can pause the video. I just want to point out as well um, that we know that um, Yemen and for example has had a, a, a black african society for as far back as you can find history for okay so don't ever allow people to believe uh, to, to, to lead you to believe should i say sorry that um it's just you know arab people on that side of the of, of the red sea and there's another Bit of fact that you can see. Fact thirty one. John the Fourth, King oh sorry, John the Sixth, sorry, the King of Portugal, a dark mulatto, was a was the maker of modern Brazil transferring his throne to Rio de Janeiro in 1808 CE. He ruled Portugal from Brazil and this is the only time that a European country has been ruled by an American one. If we don't take into consideration the fact that the royal family of Britain, England, Queen Liz, rules America. Oh, it's actually talking about European countries, so ignore me. Ha. Fact 32. Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte. Except this right now as well, gang, by the way. I can't speak French. Um, a coloured man was the founder of the present royal family in Sweden. Enlisting as a private in Napoleon's army, he rose to a field marshal and in 1818 CE he ascended to the throne of Sweden as Charles the 14th. So who'd have thought it? A country which we typically consider to be ethnically white as white as white as the snow that they have fallen on them, you know, con you know, a con consistent time around the clock. Who would have thought that they were establishing, um, had their origins with the foundation of a black African person? They don't tell you this. Fact 33. The word slave was originally applied to white people and it comes from Slav, a Russian people captured by the Germans. Um, real quick, the Century Dictionary, say, Dictionary says originally one of the Slavs or Slavonians taken in war. Slav originally means people of glory. So I mean, you see how the word Slav has been redefined to mean something that we, we have such a negative connotation to. It's not the first time that we've seen that this has happened. You know, we see this in the black community all of the time. You know, words being redefined to be used against us. For example, the word Negro, as we've discussed multiple times. Fact 34. Between 1526 and 1859 CE, there were 33 slave revolts in the United States, one of which was headed by that of Nat Turner. Um, in 1831 CE. With only six companions, Turner set out to free the three million enslaved black African people. The United States sent Marines and two warships against him and um, his coalition after he killed 55 uh, white people and captured several plantations. The Seminoles, or runaways, of mixed Indian and Negro descent of Florida fought three wars with the United States to preserve their freedom. 
Halo, peace and more powers resonate in peace to my light Nat Turner. That's the crazy thing. I mean, they'll, they'll tell you about Nat Turner, but they won't tell you about the other 32 re re um, revolts and re 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 rebellions which actually took place in America because they want to portray and continuate and perpetuate an image of a subdued black African people who are actually happy to have been oppressed, which we know is not the reality. Fact 35. White children were kidnapped in the British Isles at a rate of several thousands yearly in the 17th and 18th centuries and sold into slavery in America and the West Indies. Sometimes they were bootlegged and sold as Negroes. White Americans, North and South, were also kidnapped and seduced and sold as Negroes until 1859 CE. One of the most celebrated cases of a white person sold as a slave was Sally Muller. She was held in servitude in Louisiana for 26 years at a court after court after court ruled against her until finally her birth certificate was dug out and it was proved and she was freed by a supreme court in 1818 ce fact 36 in 1860 there were 487,000 free negroes in the united states of whom owned slaves cd wilson estimates that there were 6230 slaveholders and the tax returns in charleston in, in uh, charleston or charleston south carolina for 1860 ce show 132 slave owners with 390 slaves the negro slaveholders like the white ones fought to keep their chattels during civil war fact fact 37 in parts of Arabia and parts of North Africa, white persons, mostly women, are still held as slaves, as are many Negroes. Sometimes the owners of these white slaves are Negroes. It's nothing to brag about. Fact 38. The Afro-American, though just a dot of the world's population, holds as and held and has held as many high uh, uh, the Afro-American, though just a dot in the world's population, holds or has held an unusually high percentage of the world's athletic championships, and there have been 13 world champion boxers thus far. Jack Johnson, Joe Lewis, John Henry Lewis, Tiger Flowers, John Walcott, Dixie Kidd, John Thompson, Henry Armstrong, Joe Gans, and George Dixon. National and university titles and world record-breaking titles in sport have been held in the hundreds of the 12 collegiate championships held on the 1st of June in 1940 CE, Negroes won eight. Negroes have held 10 Olympic titles. There was D. Hart Hubbard, who won the broad jump. Eddie Toulon, who won the 100 and 200. There was Eddie Gordon, who won the broad jump. There was Cornelius Johnson, who won the high jump. Jesse Owens, who won the 100, 200 and broad jump. John Woodroffe, who won the 800. And there was Archie Williams, who I did not mention because I forgot. Fact 39. Abraham Hannibal, captured as a slave in Africa, was adopted by Peter the Great as a son and taught him military engineering. Later, Hannibal became a tutor to the heir to the throne and the commander-in-chief to the Russian army, and he died in 1782 at the age of 90, owning a vast estate and over 2,000 slaves. Uh, I'd also just like to point out as well that Abram was an Eritrean brother, or what we would call modern-day Eritrea today. Boom. Fact 40. Toussaint L'Overture had planned after Haiti was free to go to the Homie, which is in West Africa, and to use it as a base to which to fight the international slave trade. For this purpose, he had saved six million gold francs, uh, which is equivalent to the sum in dollars now, which of course was contemporary to 1934, so it would be worth a lot more in today's figures, um, which he entrusted to somebody called Stephen Girard, an American ship captain, and after the treacherous capture of Toussaint, Girard would not hand over the money to Toussaint's family. During the nine months of imprisonment, Toussaint was tormented by Napoleon's agents to reveal the hiding place and, loca and the location of the money, which he refused. Um, later, Girard, a Frenchman by birth, uh, became the richest man in America of his day, and he left millions on his death in 1831 for the founding of the Girard College, which I believe is in Philadelphia, as it states there. 
stipulating that it be for white people only and he used the money to buy coal for other poor white families and other provisions so to saint Le overture is a boss if you haven't heard already there is a film coming out um, or is out now called 1804 made by the same people who made hidden colors and i recommend that you go and watch that i'm eager i'm, in, I'm ready to watch that day up there's a second page of proofs for you oh sorry it's not it's the new fact fact 41 napoleon had 12 west indian negro generals who served in france namely general alexander dumas um, there was Andre Ragard, Marshal Besset, uh, B. Laville, Antoine Clarlaté, J. B. Belly, um, Maglo Pelage, Alex Pétion, A. Chantaletti, or Chanlaté, or and Bartholomew. I would also just like to point out again, I, I don't read French. Do you get me? Um, again, you can take a little screenshot and get your proof. Fact 42. One of the most daring Filipinos against the American troops in the Philippines in 1899 was the American Negro deserter named Fagan. A short based article, a short article based on his life by Roland Thomas, a noted American writer, won first place in a national wide contest in 1914 winning ten thousand dollars i mean the reality of this situation is yeah if you're a black african person who is already oppressed in this country and you're being sent to fight another country and oppress that country and you see an opportunity to make a positive impact in the resistance and rebellion of that oppression of course as a compassionate black african person you're going to relate to these people and do what you can do so peace and more powers to man like fagan Fact 43. Captain of the Navy S. H. Mortonal, an unmixed Negro, commander uh, commanded the air defenses of Paris from 1916 to 1980 with 205 planes and 10,000 white men under him. He, it was he who located and destroyed the big berthers that were used to bombard Paris from a distance of 60 to 80 miles. A piece of more powers. Fact 44. The United States has had seven big wars exclusive of the Indian ones. The Negro has distinguished himself in all of them. In the last war, France awarded the Crooks D Group to five whole Negro regiments, the 369th, the 370th, the 371st, the 372nd, as well as the 1st Battalion of the 376th. 60 Negro officers and 350 non-commissioned officers and men were decorated for valor. 41 Negroes have received a Congressional Medal of Honor for Bravery. Again, you can take a look at screenshot and pause the video for your proofs. Fact 45. 178,975 Negro soldiers fought in the Union Army between 1861 CE and 1865 CE and there were 161 Negro regiments as follows. There was 141 infantry divisions, seven cavalry, div seven cavalry divisions, 12 heavy artillery divisions, one light artillery division, and a total number of Negroes aiding in the Union Army was perhaps thought to be estimated to be twice that number. <laughs> Check out that brother on the far there, right, with his, with his little trap meat pistol. But it ain't no joke. joke. Fact 46. The English word for admiral and the French equivalent amiral were adopted as a result for the great admiration held for the Negroid sea rovers who used to scour the coasts of Europe for slaves as late as the 19th century. It comes from Amir al Bahar, the Lord of the Seas, commander of the sea rovers, and the principal port for the latter was Sali in Maroc or Morocco or El Maroc, depending on what you call it, if you are a Moorish brother like that. Um, the United States squadron under Commodore Decato, again, remember I cannot speak French, was sent to Africa to actually attempt to free the white Africans which were held in bondage. Fact 47. Ex-Kaiser Wilhelm II had a Negro uncle by adoption. His 
grandfather Wilhelm I adopted a Negro boy given to him by an African explorer as his son. Henry Noel, as he was called, grew up in the royal palace and he was an officer in the German army. Fact 48. Oh, this one's a funny one. Tony Simpson, a humble Louisiana Negro posing as Prince Antonio Apache of Arizona, became a social lion of the elite of New York and Philadelphia in 1903 CE. Pardon me. Even President Theodore Roosevelt was taken by him. The latter consulted Prince Apache several times on Indian affairs at the White House, and the prince was tall and imposing, dressed like a Boo Brummel, and had the manners of a Chesterfield, and he used to wear a wig attached to a tuft of his own woolly hair. Imagine how ridiculous this is. They killed out all of the Americans to the point where they had to uh, hire a, a black African person to impersonate the people which they've just eradicated to find out what's wrong with the people they've just eradicated. Fact 49. Haywood Shepherd, a free Negro, was the first person killed by John Brown's party of white Negro raiders at the park. Oh, at the Harper's Ferry in the efforts to free slaves in 1859. Shepard, whilst running off to distract white people, was shot dead in his tracks. Um, for those who don't know about the Harper's Ferry incident, basically uh, a bunch of free black African people attempted to free some other black African people and um, Haywood was used like used, used his body as a distraction and got shot, so he was a bit of a martyr. So, resonate in peace, Ashe Hotep Uncle Joseph Nepta Man like Haywood. Fact 50 An American Negro has 20 chances to a white American's on reaching the age of 100, 100 and over. And the proof of this is that various U.S. census, contemporary to the time, of course report consistently show that Afro-Americans are longer lived than white Americans. In 1900 CE, there were 837 whites who had reached the age of 100 and over, and there were 2,553 Negroes, or 30 to 1 in favor of the Negroes. Those are good genes. But yes, Gang, we back again, full circle, another 25 amazing facts as told by J.A. Rogers from 1934. Um, thank you ever so much for your time, Uncle Jarson Neb, that means life, prosperity and health. Um, I have to just remind you one more time that the new book is available to order. You can go to the Patreon account and you can check the post and you can check how you can actually get a copy all copies are going to be sent out on the 1st of December, 11 days in advance of the actual official launch. So please go and support it because, as I said, not only are you helping me to obviously support other projects, but you're also able to expand and educate your own level of knowledge and also supplement that education into your family's, um, like, you know, home education. Um, so peace, peace, and more powers. Thank you ever so much for your time, Uncle Joss and them once again. And hopefully... I'll see you soon.